Hello and welcome to the Two Robbies podcast, your destination for in-depth discussion and analysis of the Premier League, the Champions League and the Europa League. I'm Robbie Musto, he's Robbie Earl, and here are today's topics. Arsenal running riot over Tottenham at an ecstatic stadium. Manchester City and Pep finally getting one over on Chelsea and Tuchel. Manchester United dropping all three points to Villa after Bruno Fernandes' missed penalty. Brentford and Liverpool playing out a six-goal thriller. And Raul Jimenez finally gets on track on the score sheet for Wolves. That's what we've got coming up in today's episode. All right, my friend. Mm-hmm. Uh, another very informative uh, bunch of games in the Premier League, mate. A few defining kind of games, big matchups. Um and I guess the one we're going to start with, Rob, the North London derby. And yeah. a, a, a feel-good factor around the Emirates that I, I, I'm struggling to, to remember back when we last had it that good. Arsenal 3, mm-hmm. Tottenham Hotspur 1. Three goals in Arsenal for the first in the first 45 minutes or the first yeah. 34 minutes, to be more accurate, Rob. And a really, really strong showing from Arsenal Football Club. And are we finally starting to see the fruits of the work the fruits of the labor mm. the the we knew it was going to be a big transitional kind of moment for Mikel Arteta he's taken a ton of flack from everybody it seems like almost everybody in the media Rob, about how it started for Arsenal and Mikel Arteta are we starting to see what it's going to be all about for Arsenal I think you're right. I think Carlo said in commentary, a rebirth of Arsenal, and Graham was so sort of said, let's temper that down a little bit. But what yep. I do think, Rob, are there are real positive steps in the right direction. Today, in a big game, in a North London derby, where it was a, it was a really important game for both these teams, for Arsenal to show that one their wins against Burnley and Norwich were yeah, better yeah. than maybe yeah. the, the results showed. For Spurs to show that having won three games, the first three games 1-0 and then lost the last couple, conceding three goals, that they're better than that. It, it, it was like a day of proving something in the North London Dolly. And the biggest compliment I can give to Mikel Arteta's team uh, was they were prepared to do what was required to win the game. And they the system worked well. They brought Jacker in to, to have two holding midfield players. He played the three young players in front of him, Smith Rowe, Odegaard, who I want to talk about separately, and, and Saka, and Obama Yang up top. And they bought a life, they bought an energy, they bought intensity. Before you get to X's and O's and systems and all those things that are intricate, mm. just wanting mm. to win a football game, a big derby game at home, one team were up for it. And I said on air, Rob, one team looked like they were a, a, a testimonial for, or a charity game, like oh, strolling around, not really too interested. I couldn't quite mm. believe what I was seeing from Tottenham. Mm. Um, and that's mm. to take nothing away from how well Arsenal started the game and how good mm. the football was in that first period of the, of the first half. Yeah, I think Spurs, and we'll get on to Spurs, look like they're unsure of what's going on, what the manager wants. You know, certain players looking out of sorts, and Arsenal finally look like they know what they're trying to do. And the message has got across from the manager now. We know that this is going to be a very new team. This is when you look through the line, Rob. It's kind of new. It's new goalkeeper Ben White, mm. Tommy Asu, uh, Odegaard was there, but again, new into the team. Abamian playing as a centre forward is a little bit new. Normally plays on the left hand side. Um, and, and I'm in some ways, Rob. I'm quite, I'm quite um, pleased for Mikel Arteta because I mm. think he took an incredible amount, and it's the one thing going through my mind uh, of slack and of hammer in those first few weeks when he didn't even put the team out with his new players that he brought in, Rob. Now the last three games has been wow. Ramsdale's been in the side. Tommy Ross is in the side. You know the Lokongas had plenty of minutes. Now we're starting to to see what he wants. And the signings that again were questioned, Rob, from lots of people. Oh, we spent all this money, but we got five players. And should we have gone for more quality? And it was a bit nah with some of the signings. Again, it's early doors, and and, mm. and Graham's probably right. And this isn't, of course, the you know, it's not a new flipping amazing Arsenal from here on in, but at least we're seeing the new signings in the team mm. playing well, 
good shape, good organization, you're right. That should be taken for granted, Rob, the, the desire and the effort mm. and everything else in these games, but it hasn't always been. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I just thought it was bright. It was good football that Arsenal fans want. Um, uh, you know, players, the young players, the future of the football club and, and those three you talked about, I mean, they're looking comfortable. And there's also a versatility there, Rob. We saw in the last game, Martin Odegaard played in the middle of the park. It was brilliant in the last game that they played. So lots of good signs. Finally, Arteta smiling. Finally, the Emirates, like, mm. jumping at the end. And I feel, I feel good for them, mate, because we take a little bit of, you know... We we got friends that are Arsenal fans, Rob, and we get a little bit mm. of social media stuff and like, oh, you only spoke you know, about Arsenal for a couple of minutes, and 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 I feel like, well, yeah, there you go. When, when there's, mm. then there's reason to talk about Arsenal, and we've done, we'll, we'll do it on the bad times and the good times. Yeah. And today, time to talk about them and spend some time because it was a good performance and a bright looking team that's got to be exciting, Rob, for the future. Yeah, and and one of the things that came across to me, Rob, was there, there felt the right mixture of Outstanding youth potential and some good pros around them. Thomas Porte, Rob, we did a piece yeah. on um, on the tactics board about his role and how just a bit more disciplined he is. And, and he reads danger quite well and he blocks holes between the centre-backs. Jacker was was more considered and wasn't as emotional as we've ever seen him. And that would bet, I think, playing with Porte will help him. Obama Young, Rob, looked more like the centre-forward we know who can get 20 goals. He's a threat over the top. He can bring players in the game. He can rotate positions. He's got great skills. I mean, the flick for the Smith Rowe um, yeah. ball that he ends up scoring is, 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 is a beautiful bit of, of centre forward play. Now, if he can become the leader of that group and take them under his wing, and he talks in his press conference after the game about enjoying being with these kids and when, it, when it's right, he tries to give them help and advice. That's the right kind of mix as we go forward. And then Ben White's growing into becoming, I think, understanding what playing at Arsenal means. Gabriel's been a bonus next to him because consistency from him and a, a good partner is helping. And even the goalkeeper, now I wasn't, mm. I wasn't so keen on the goalkeeper. Uh, two, three clean sheets in three games, all competitions before today. Two in the League, one in, in the League Cup. Come, pulls off a brilliant save at 3-1, where it just might mm. have made things a little bit nervous. And um, I tell you what, the other thing that I was impressed with him, Rob, his confidence and sometimes bravery to play out of the back. Yeah. And, he um, made one, know, one bad ball, Rob. He made one, one bad ball, yeah. Ball. But, which listen, is, is going to happen. You might have to get yeah. through that, you know, mm. in, in the course of a game, if that's only one, that's actually not too bad a number. Hmm. Yeah, just on, just on something you said there, Rob, about Obama Yang and stuff. Now about him being a leader and a captain, and I, I don't, I don't know whether he would, he is going to be that guy, Rob, that's going to uh, nurture these young players and really well, mentor them a little actually, bit, Rob. Bobby, in the after the game, I don't know if you saw all he's saying. He said, "No, I didn't see." What he's saying? Yeah, so it was Smith Rowe and him who did the interview at, at Sky, our hmm. partners in the UK, and um, he was asked about the game, and whatever, and he said. What's great for me now is, a, you know, these three young players, it's great training with them. He said, when it, when it's the right time, I try and give them advice, but okay. I let them be themselves. And I just mm. thought that's a, that's a take, that's a step forward in, in what we've mm. seen from him. And it's almost mm. as though he's been reignited by what they brought underneath him. Their quality and speed of play and, and, and creativity is actually making him look a good player again. Yeah, I, I always, I've always believed in Aubameyang. I just mm. think he's a class striker. He, he's done it for season after season. Again, people he have a little quiet period. He signed the big contract and people kind of thought that maybe that's it for him. He's happy and he's just going to... Uh, I'm a big fan of his. Um, and I'd like to see him play as a centre-four. Took his goal really, really well. Yeah. Second goal for Arsenal today. Um, Gabriel Rob, another player you want to touch on. Yeah. Um, you talk about potential leaders. I think he's a potential leader, Rob. It's mm. like, again, Arlo and Common talked about the record that Arsenal have in the Premier League when he's played yeah. goals conceded. It's pretty good. Um, I think he is such an important player, mm. such an important player for this back four, a new look back four. I think yeah. Ben White, you're absolutely right, different sort of player to Gabriel. But the more games that Ben White can go through, Rob, and there's no drama, and they keep yeah. and they're winning games, and there's no spotlight on spotlight on Ben White. He needs reps for yeah. me at this level mm. at that club. And that's I mean, yeah, well, that's that, some well, that jump up, by the way. Yeah, yeah, that's, that, some that's jump a step up, up from, from Brighton. Yeah, 
Yeah, so the more no drama Ben White games, mm. he will benefit that and he will start to, to ease in to be a really important part of this back four. Tommy Asu, the, the new right back, the, yeah, I think the fans ready. love his energy. I, again, it's very easy to to go overboard when it's such yeah, a good performance. Yeah. I'm just, I'm not going overboard. I'm just pleased that the Arsenal fans are starting to see mm. slight and, and, and like, it's not, you know, they're not going to go on and, and flip in, finish in the top four, but there's there's progression, mate. Now, isn't, it, yeah. isn't it something that, that I or we have always said, Rob, is that with these new managers, that, that are these big clubs, and it's a big project in adverse commerce, yeah. that there's still got to be signs of progress, no matter how kind of low it looks, you've got to have a mm. sense of things is there are going the right direction. And now I think the Arsenal fans will start to believe that. And. It was interesting. We were talking in the um, in the studio after the game as we were leaving, and um, just saying that I hope they have the Thomas uh, Frank um, approach to things. Like twenty four hours, enjoy this for twenty four hours. Enjoy the yeah. game. Enjoy what you've done, and then get back to work. Get back to what's required. Get back to the training ground. Get back to knowing that if we do all the things right in the week, these are the kind of performances who come at the weekend. What I don't want is too too much. Over celebration. Of- Do you think it was too much at the end, Rob? So um, I wanted to write down and ask you about. I, it, there was a lot at the end. I'll tell was, you right it, now. It, for, it, it, what it do you think? It kind of felt okay to me, Rob, because I think some of that is fans back in the stadium, the first Northern, Northern Derby since the pandemic. Great win at home, and you know a pressure game. I kind of feel it, it, today was is is a, is a pass, is an okay. I know what you mean, though. You you can go overboard with that stuff, and and that mm. and that can be destructive as well I'm, I'm giving it today but i want them to make sure monday's training is back to work back to doing the mm. job because this has to become consistency now for more so that's the key to success and michael arteta where he starts to know what he's going to get of course you have better days and players have great moments in matches but once we can start to say what the consistency is what we expect from arsenal then we're mm. going to really see some some changes in, in this team start to be part at that top six and hopefully back to the top four. Yeah, I, I thought it was great to see, actually. Mm. You know, Arteta's had, had a lot to deal with over the yeah. last couple of months, three months, really. Um, and I think it's something you're seeing quite a bit. We're going to go on to talk about Brentford yeah. <laughs> and Thomas Frank and all that. But I think it's something that you're seeing around different stadiums. Maybe it's, mm. it's because the fans are back in the stadium, but I think yeah. the connection is kind yeah. of important between the manager and the players mm. and the fans. And I think when you get opportunity to kind of appreciate their support over difficult times, yeah, it's it. nice with so, Arteta as well good. because he's very considered normally, isn't he? We don't really see very. too much emotion from him, and yeah. today it came out. Lost it came out well, and as you say, I, I thought that there were some really good shots there that endear him to the fans. I think the, the connection, like you say, that the clocks have and, yeah. and the two calls have, and um, yeah, make a lot out. So it was a great day for him. Let's let's turn the the spotlight on the other team, Rob, the team in white, yeah. who didn't particularly start so well. Um, 3 0 down, as you say, in 35 minutes. I mean, Nuno's come out after the game and talked a little bit. I don't know, again, if you heard him, sort of said it wasn't so much the system, it was more the players, the way they played it, which was a, a very sort of Nuno version of chucking them one or two players under the bus. Hmm. He's still learning, Rob. He hmm. is learning a lot about what he's got. And to go into a North London derby in a midfield three, of Hoiber, yeah, yeah, of course, mm. you'd have him in in, in this game. Mm. Delhi and Ndombele, yeah, was was risky, and the first three goals, Robbie Earl, and mm. if I was in the studio, I think you broke down the first goal in yeah. terms of those midfield yeah. players. Yeah. Each goal, the Spurs midfield were nowhere. If mm-hmm. one of them, Hoiber was close, but still behind the play, it wasn't goal yeah. side of yeah, the ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That midfield was so empty, it was embarrassing. And it, and it shouldn't happen. And I wasn't surprised that Skip came on midfield. And mm. I don't even know why, what Oliver Skip's done wrong, by the way. Yeah, and apologise yeah. if he's got some kind of knock that we haven't, mm. I don't know about. I thought he was a good part of the first few games for them. He came in, made it look better. But their midfield, like Delhi and Ndombele's desire to help. I mean, Delhi, Rob, we, I think we both appreciate what he can do. And previous managers, of course, Jose Mourinho may disagree with our yeah. thoughts on Delhi, and he might be right. He might be right. The Delhi is, is, for whatever reason, is not prepared to to put in the hard yards 
to do things that he's got to do in the middle of the park. Now, there's been games where he's done it. The first couple of games, remember he was in there? Yeah, he played the left side of the really field, really didn't he? The left side of the three. Yeah. But but that, I mean, and again, I know Ndombele is a, a, a great footballer, and creative, but if you're not, if you don't match, you don't defensively have some sort of responsibility to help your back four, it's going to be a disaster. I thought the midfield was was shocking today for Spurs. Mm. It was interesting because all, um, all of the smart came uh, came on at uh, half time. Skip, yeah. the skip even came on at, at half time, and it was a really interesting look. So Nuno was talking to him about position. And you 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 virtually saying you know you play next to Hoy Bear, and obviously Ndombele had a little bit more of a free. So he inverted the, yeah. the, the three that he started with, and the look on Skip's face was and i've been there rob and i know the look and i know that the thing it was almost like well you put me on now with three nil down why didn't you start me was the look all over his face i know people mm. say i'm reading mm. into that let me tell you i, mm. I know that look because i've been that player before now where you haven't played you're a little bit upset and then the team are down then the manager chucks you on you think well oh great what with three nil down you want me to go and win the game and, and some of that has to fall on nuno rob if i know he's finding out but Still it's a big North right. London derby. If if you can't trust Deli Alley, if you can't trust him, Rob, then don't don't gamble on him in, in a North London derby. I mean, my my point goes further, and and I think we have, we might have had this discussion a little while ago. I look at the Spurs lineup, and there's too many people I don't know about. Rob, I don't know if they're with me really when it gets up. Regalon, Sanchez, Dyer, Deli. Lucas Moore, to a certain degree, I don't particularly put him there. And then Dombele. Rob, I don't know. Mm. We, we've had different managers who've had different looks at them. We've tried different systems with them. We've tried different management with them. We're still asking the same question. It was like when we used to talk about Chris Smalling and Phil Jones. And I used to say, why do we keep asking, are they good enough for Manchester United? If, the reason we're having this discussion is because yeah. they aren't. I'm not sure asking. if at some point somebody's going to have to make a decision on Delhi. Are we going to keep... Remember in Delhi Ali, Ali, the guy who flipped over the head at Crystal Palace, scored the goal and was brilliant and, and that? Or is it really the real Delhi Ali now somebody who can only play at 60, 70% of that? And then the real intensity of red hot games gets blown away. Let me, let me just move in a slightly different direction, Rob. I'm going to take you higher, right, at this football club. Mm. Daniel Levy decisions. Number one to hire Jose Mourinho. Mm. Number two, to stop Harry Kane moving. Number three, to hire Nuno Espirito Santo. Now, <sighs> there's been some big decisions, Rob, at that football club mm. to, to take over from Pochettino, to bring in Sack Mourinho. In that didn't. Sacking Poch in there as well. Right, yeah. yeah. And so bringing in Mourinho mm. didn't work. The summer, Harry Kane, the stubbornness, to one hundred and fifty million pounds, unrealistic figure. We could have sold him for reports say one hundred and twenty million pounds, and the way that Kane's performing right now, and of course the Nuno situation where different managers were touted, nobody it seemed wanted to come, and you end up with Nuno. It is is the hierarchy at Spurs? If you if you listen to a lot of Spurs fans, Rob, they will, and and it, you know it's been a little again like, and, and I'll say this quickly, Rob, like some of the comments we get and. It's really hard to know every heartbeat of every club. So yeah, people yeah, will tell us, know, yeah. and the stuff we hear about Spurs, that you know, we can't. It's impossible mm. to be that close to twenty Premier League clubs when you're in it week in week out. But a lot of criticism goes to Daniel Levy in the football club, where we, when you look at it from a little bit more from the outside, which is us, what amazing training ground! You know, mm. you did you got to Chelsea Great final not long ago. You have a brand new stadium. Like, is he? Is he done that bad a job? I'm just throwing it back to you, Rob. Maybe this is part of it. Big decisions on the football side have not always been good ones. No. Uh, listen, it, it's always easy to look at those decisions and, and wait till the end. The, the Jose Mourinho didn't work. I didn't think it, it was a bad choice. I thought it might be what they needed. We all said this is a team with potential. It needs to get mm. over the line. It needs to be pushed, as you said. Jonah, Jose Mourinho's as good as there is at that, at that or has been in the past. Didn't work. Wasn't the right fit. Ended up, you know, him losing a job before he goes to a League Cup final that he might have won. Who knows what would have happened. But mm. as ever, people said it was toxic. 
The Harry Kane thing, I think we slightly disagree on that one in terms of, yes, it's okay to, to say, let's spend the money. What if we got the money, couldn't buy the players we wanted? Will we be any better? I'm not so sure on that one. I think we can agree to disagree that he did the right thing he felt for the football club. Nuno is interesting. Um, the three wins in the first three games, I think we're looking at it thinking, mm, this mm, might not be bad. Good, he's, yeah. he's a decent coach. He's been seventh twice in the league with Wolves. He works with players. He's a training ground player. I think what we've seen today is, and it's interesting you, you touched on it because something we did in the studio, is this, is, this t, is this group of players set up to do what Nuno wants? And are they going to be prepared to play the way he's had success, which maybe he can do at Wolves, but I'm not sure is as easy to do at Tottenham. Give the mm. opposition the ball, sit back, and, and we'll wait for times mm. to counter attack. I think, I think, of course, like most sensible, maybe neutrals of this would say, listen, he's got a given time, Rob. Nuno yeah, needs time. Sure, yeah. And, it's and like it's still very, it's like Arteta. I don't think it's quite as big as a job, Rob. I think there's a few, I think yeah. there's better parts and, and less kind of bad apples in this squad. Yeah. Could be wrong. Um, but I think he needs time, Rob, to figure out how he wants to play, who his, who his reliable, trusted players will be, and, and, and try and find a way back to, you know, getting those victories and the clean sheets. Everything with Nuno, I think, starts with good defensive situation, Rob. So I think he's been, you know, I think there's some criticism a few games ago, Rob, but there's nothing creative. Yeah. It was against Chelsea, or the, the, yeah. one of the... And then he's gone with Andombele, and he's gone a little bit more the other side, and now he's been battered three, three goals, isn't it, in the yeah. last... Yeah. Three in the yeah, last three, three, they've conceded. The last yeah. Three, yeah, they've conceded nine goals in the last three. Mm -hmm. So I think so. It's work in progress, um, but it was a you know just summarising. Rob, what a fun yeah. fun game it was. Oh, brilliant game. Brilliant I game. mean, North London derby. You know, it's whichever stadium. There'd be great atmospheres in both stadiums. But it was Arsenal's day, and they deserve yeah. it. And uh, in some ways, I'm pleased for Arteta to get you know a little bit of um, momentum going now for him. Can I finish you off quickly yep. on Harry Kane? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, North yeah. London derbies, um, the record. Uh, we did a little bit of room chat this morning about Harry and where he is mentally and as the summer affected him. You know, there's a lot of talk about he's only had 10 touches in the box over the, the first part of the season, obviously yet to score. Had a couple of good looks today. He's had a header. He's had a shot that goes the wrong side of the post, which he normally scores. I thought he, was, he, he should have got a, a penalty kick. Should, his team should have earned a penalty kick and he would have probably taken it. Um but he doesn't quite look himself, Rob, does he? I mean, I know people are always looking at body language and, and reasons to, mm. to, to, to say mm. he doesn't quite look in the right spot at the moment. I, I think so, Rob. It's so difficult. Isn't it difficult to judge a player when yeah. the team's Not transitioning well. a little bit? Um, he gave the ball away, Rob, didn't he, for the yeah. third goal as well? Goal, he messed around goal, with yeah. the ball in a deeper position there. Yeah, I... I I just got to imagine it's got to be pretty tough when he wants that move that he wants and, and he's got to kind of get on with it again. And we all assumed, by the way, that he's such a good pro and he, he went back into training and that he'd be absolutely fine. But maybe he's not. He's difficult to read, Rob, isn't he? Mm. He's yeah. He's, to read. He's, not, yes, not, yeah. he's not one of those, right, that wears his heart on the sleeve. You, no. you can see how they are emotionally. You know, maybe the body language, you can read it a little bit, um, but he's not easy to read. Mm. He's, a, he's a class player. I, I, it's just tough. It's a tough one. I, I, naturally, I would think if you just put yourself in a situation, yeah, Rob, and I'm trying yeah. to try and do the same thing. It's got to be a disappointment when you and an it. agreement, it's agreement with the owner, and, and they mm. say, you know what, you can't. I, 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 I would think I would find it really almost impossible to believe that his his short term form isn't affected by what happened in the summer. I would just find it incredibly <laughs> difficult, you know. Yeah, like well, it's there, mate. It's <laughs> yeah, it looks like the cleaners just come up. Yeah, um, but yeah, we'll, we'll obviously keep an eye on Harry yeah. Kane, see how things transpire out over there. Obviously, desperate to get his first goal. I'm sure when he gets one, he'll get flying again. Um, let's move it on, mate, to the other big game. Actually, you haven't done your underappreciated performer of the week. Oh, I'm sorry. I got so excited, so carried away. So yes, excited. Mate. You're under, uh, yeah. I'm going to give you so time, under... and obviously, it's a bit of a giveaway. Probably nobody in the Spurs camp. Well, no, no, no. Uh, my underappreciated performer of the weekend is Mikel Arteta. I think I've said basically um, what the reasons for that with the criticism, the stick, the people wanting him out of the position, 
um, before he got his players into the team. So I, I just think that he has been underappreciated. I'm not saying he's a world of a manager. I just mm. think like, come on, give this guy a little bit of time and, and before before we start like shouting him out of his position. So well done, Miguel Arteta. Yeah. Uh, underappreciated performer of the weekend. Now you can move on, mate. Let's move on to Chelsea nil, Manchester City one. So the reigning title winners beating the reigning Champions League winners uh, in reverse of that game. And Thomas Tuchel had got, was it three victories against Pep, was looking to turn that four. His mm. team are at home. His team are in good form. His team, Chai slightly changed his team a little bit, played the three in the midfield, two up front, Werner and Lukaku, with his back three and wing backs. Um, and in the end, came out a bit of a poor second, Rob, in, in this game. Mm. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, they got battered, really. What 1-0 was is very kind to Chelsea. Um, my main headlines for Man City is this obviously is what we, we we expected from in terms of the lineup from Pep in the Champions League final. A defensive midfield player played alongside a creative that was Bernardo Silva. You had the two players, Phil Foden and Kevin De Bruyne and Rob, both playing as kind of false yeah, nines, nine. dropping yeah. in. Um, what they'd done in the Champions League up to the final, now where it all changed. Jesus played on the right-hand side. Jack Grealish, obviously, is a good player, played on the left-hand mm. side. And from the start to pretty much the finish, City were up for it, Rob. They were up for it. Absolutely up for it. The football, the passing was superb. Um, really, really good football without getting the breakthrough at half-time. And and Chelsea had a couple of looks on the counter-attack, small looks, but it was dominated yeah. by Man City. It's just there was a there was a part of me that thought, okay, you know, where's the where's the kind of the penetration part? And when the goal came, Jesus gets the goal, clever little turn in the box, a little deflection goes into corner net. That was the breakthrough, Rob. And then after yeah. that, Chelsea had to come out a little bit, and City were just good value. You know, just yeah. when you think <laughs> it's similar to last year, just when you think, oh, City, are yeah. they gonna? You know, are they really going to drive again to win this title? Um, they reminded everybody um, that may have doubted them is that that when they're on and when everybody's kind of fit and you had De Bruyne in the side, and you had Phil Foden's back in the side now and Grealish, of course, on the left-hand side continues to look good for them. They're a very, very good team. Defensively, Diaz and Laporte played in this one, Rob. Walk was the insurance policy on the right-hand side. And Salo did all the things that he's good at on the left. Very, yeah. very impressive Man City. No, no question, very impressive. Yeah, I thought it was an important day for Pep and his team as well, just to kind of re-establish themselves and a little bit of standing in the league. I think if they were to get beat on that one, I think people would start talking the doom and gloom and there's no centre mm. forward, which we know this guy yeah. can play without, without one. The system's well set up. I mean, also controlled Chelsea where Chelsea didn't have a, a shot on target in the whole 90 minutes. Yeah, which, yeah. You know, no, it, it, they played like champions, Rob. They played yeah. like champions. Yeah. All I would say is, right, and of course, we watch the game and we and we formulate some thoughts and we make some notes. My my last bit on on in terms of the notes here is they've got to they've got to try and maintain that mojo every week. Mm. Mm. And I think that's going to be the key to this season. Chelsea have taken it on the chin there. They take it on the mm. chin, but I'm not necessarily thinking because City looked a better team. They looked a yeah. better team. Yeah. I don't necessarily think that that's going to translate over 38 games because I think. I don't know, in certain matches, certain times in the season, they might just drop off a little bit. Again, could be wrong. I was wrong last yeah, year. Yeah, that's going to be the um, test, isn't it? And, and the other yeah. thing I would say in their favour, Rob, is they've got plenty of numbers, quality players yeah. who can come in, who can change it a little bit. Sterling can can come in and, yeah. you know, Gundogan can come in. and Mahrez can, can come in. Yeah, so the, there is, you know, John Stone still to be added. Uh, there's no doubt Ruben Diaz, when he's in the team, makes a difference for him, Rob, though. Mm. You know, just yeah. you know, you look yeah. look at his numbers when he's around and completely yeah. different. But yeah, big win for, for Manchester City and, and Pep establishing themselves, um, just getting one over Chelsea. And I think also a little lesson for Thomas Tuchel, really, that you know, Champions League's one thing and great um credit for winning that. But he, he's you know, 38 game season in the Premier League is gonna be a tough old slog and they're going to have to do it week in, week out. Just wanted to turn your attention, Rob, to two players who probably, certainly one feels like he's sitting on the outside of the best 11 in Timo Werner. The other, Gabriel Jesus. I was kind of looking at those, so thinking about those two, Rob, and thinking, well, you know, Jesus should be his time now and, and kind of playing on that right-hand side, doing a, a mm. decent job. 
Werner will probably feel like he's got to wait for his opportunities. He plays as a sort of striker underneath Lukaku. Um, had a couple of half chances, dragged a couple of balls across the box, but didn't really look that cutting edge. I mean, if you if you, if you had the choice of one, if there was as, as, as a striker in your team, who would you take? Hmm. Hmm. Um, probably Jesus. Mm. I think I Timo Werner. Yeah, it's been it's, it's been, been goals, and the, it's a bit goals. yeah, and I also like Jesus's. Uh, um, I like his attitude, and every yeah. every time Pep talks about him, talks about him. Yeah, I was just going to say, he was glowingly. Yeah, he yeah. deserves everything that he gets. Mm. He's such a good pro. Yeah. Team of uh, the team, the Chelsea starting lineup made sense. We've yeah. seen him play three, three in midfield when the opponents are pretty good in there. And I think you can safely assume that that's a thinking this time of Man City's yeah. midfield. Kovacic, Kante and Georgina made sense. Mm -hmm. But it still didn't stop the football. And then yeah. the, the thought of Timo Werner alongside Lukaku also made sense. They're going to be counter-attacking. Two yeah. quick players that are good on the counter. But they, they City's press was so strong, Rob, that there was hardly any moments where City's mid, uh, Chelsea's midfield players could yeah. take the time, get their head up and play... Lukaku or uh, Werner in behind or in spaces. A couple of times first half, mate. A couple of times. Mm, yeah. So it was just down to City. It's a brilliant job in terms of the pressing. But Werner, you know, Havertz came on. The fans went crazy. I think they prefer to see him in, on, in the starting yeah. lineup. But Werner, I don't know where it goes from here, mate. I, I, when you've got Lukaku, who's going to be the number nine, we've got Music to come back, of course, and Mount to come back. And I don't know... If there's a big future for Timo Werner, Rob, and and he might stay mm. this season, unless he starts to to show some progression, improvement in this team when he gets the opportunity, yeah. tough opportunity yeah. against Man City, I get it, but yeah, it, we're not seeing it yet, and it's no. uh, it's you know it's been a little bit of time now. Mm. Yeah, yeah. but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a yeah. That was too cool. It's like okay, things mm. he, he probably knows it. This league's hard, and he ain't gonna yeah. you know he's not gonna cruise to this this title. No chance. Not he's not gonna cruise to it for sure. Let's move it on to a big game at Old Trafford. I was working on this game, did a commentary with Andrus Cantor, who we had on our yep. podcast last week, and it was great to have him on and good, great to work with him. Uh, we did the Manchester United-Villa game. Uh, it was a decent game. Plenty of um, shots. Manchester United, I think, had 25, although not many great looks, to be honest. Villa had less shots, but probably better opportunities to score. Villa won it 1-0. Um, Manchester United, Rob, disappointed. Uh, if you think about the team from last season, second in the Premier League, you had Varane, you had Sancho, you had Ronaldo to the pot. And the expectation goes up, the belief goes up that Manchester United lost uh, six games at home um, at Old Trafford last season. They can't afford to go anywhere near that uh, amount of defeats if they think they're going to be challenging for a title. And this was a little bit like United of last year, Rob, with some better additions, but similar kind of performance. I mean, not great they're playing out the back, not great identity of what they're trying to do. Yes, there was chances, there was there was shots on goal, but not much created in a way where you say that's really good football. Uh, Martinez came up with a d few decent saves. Bruno bangs one over the top. Um, you know, maybe in defence, you could say he lost uh, Maguire and Shaw to injury. In the first half, that, that was would have maybe affected them, but it mm. certainly left me thinking: there's work to do for Manchester United. There's work to do for Ollie, Rob. Yeah, just really disappointing, Rob. Really disappointing mm. for those Man United fans that have been so euphoric with Ronaldo's return in the first game and Ronaldo getting a couple of goals. Uh, it, they should be better than this, Rob. I mean, yeah. disjointed, sporadic, mm. off the cuff, lacking strategy. Lacking sparkle all of a sudden. Um, still, at, I'm just reading, just read, like reading out some notes I made. Still yeah. a team of moments, mm. and most importantly, still inconsistent. Yeah. And I'm, I'm sure we've said it almost every <laughs> show about United. This looks yeah. exciting with all the players yeah. they've got, the attacking threat they've got, the defensive uh, improvements in Varane. But the, his his job to 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 make this team consistent. And mm -hmm. to be strong and and a, and a team, and they're still not a team. There's two new players, Rob. Sancho didn't start this game. Yeah. Ronaldo and Varane, and they still don't look like a team. 
They look like a tip that they, when you watch the game at the moment, there's a there's a bunch of players that play in the attack and a yeah. bunch of players that play defensively. They're not a unit defensively, they're not a unit attacking wise. So they look vulnerable, they look stretched, not just against Aston Villa, but in other games. Mm. And we've talked to for, before about the drama that United have got points. They've lost they lost in the League Cup, they lost to young boys in the Champions yeah, League. They had a narrow yeah. victory against West Ham with a noble missed penalty, and now they lose at home to Aston Villa. It's going to unravel for the manager. This yeah. is this is. Well, David Ornstein was on today. Our, our right, didn't see that. And, and he said, um, you know, contrary to what some people think, Oli might be on thin ice if this continues. He said it's not something that Man United are prepared to put with. They they backed a manager with money they with resources. Just signed a new contract, Rob. Just signed, he's just signed a new contract. Well, he, you know, I'm only saying what David said in that it, it, it might not be as like because. I think Rebecca was sort of saying, well, how long do you think? And I said, it's a season's worth. It's a season review unless oh, it goes out of the Champions League in the yeah. group stage and they drop down yeah. the league into fifth yeah. or sixth and then that's different. But otherwise, it's a, it's a look at the season. It's where they've finished. It's what they've done. It's how close they were to whatever they, they are trying to win. And it's interesting. So the League Cup one's interesting because it's it plays a sort of second-tier team against West Ham United. He loses the game, which is disappointing. One, it's another cup. Win it. Just win it. Don't, don't, you know, I know it's not the most yeah. important, but win something. The other thing, Rob, is most of those players, the the first 11 who played yesterday, rested in the League Cup. So it was it was mainly the backup players who played in the, in the League Cup. Mm. What you don't want is all your backup players not quite being good enough to come in. I mean, they were the only one of the big six teams to lose in the League Cup. And most mm. of them play the backup teams or, or you know, yeah, a combination. They, they, all teams do, both. I think. Yeah. But Manchester United still didn't get the job done. Now, you know, you can argue West Ham were maybe better than some of the opposition, but I just think those are the kind of things that are going to work against Oli in, in the long run if he's not careful. Those are the things let's people are going to bash him over the head with. Let, let's try and be a bit more specific, Rob, in terms of what it is that's not going well. I, yeah. I know we've talked about Freddie McTominay a lot, but... The ability to play out from the back, yeah, is not good those enough. Those two central midfield players, is, both is, are not is, good enough. And then from there, the ability to control a game, to control yeah. a game yeah. of possession, to be available, mm. to switch it, to play into a striker, to, to switch it to the fullback, you know, control games and to control yeah. territory. You expect United Defense. to be camped in, to camped in somebody's half. Defensive think, midfield players now, Rob. Also, Thomas Partey did it a couple of times today, and I was watching tape of him because I did a little breakdown on him. Enough a really good passer with the ball. N'Golo yeah. Kante passes the ball well. You know, Fabinho can pass the ball. Rodri, all those players who play in those yeah. big positions. Yeah, you've got to be good. Playoff. You've got to be good to start right. the passing right. movements to go. Manchester United yeah. haven't got that in Fred and McTominay. They both, McTominay's got a presence about him. I, I quite like what he offers, but he hasn't got that 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 real steely clinical pass that he, that he can bisect, um, dissect midfields and, and open things up or it doesn't play quick enough at times and that's a piece that they're missing that they continue to miss and it's the way they play because they are so disjointed um mm. it's a bit of a problem i just wonder i see baran once or twice on the ball almost trying to do it i'm wondering if it's a role that he might have to take up if mm. they are to play that way yeah I, I think some there's some real quality in that team and there's some areas that need the quality to knit it together rob um, just, I just wanted to get my little opinion out on on the the big decisions. Actually, it was Mike Dean, wasn't it? Mike Dean was the the referee. Yeah. Um, I thought it was offside. I think Ollie, Ollie Watkins, Watkins yeah. is right yeah. in front of the, and, and he's no, made contact Harvey, with the goalkeeper. Harvey Barnes in it. It was like the Harvey Barnes last week. He's in contact yeah, with the but goalkeeper. This one, I, I think he's in contact just yeah. before he fits, the yeah. head is made, yeah. and he wasn't in a position that he he could have maybe preferred to be in. In that instance, yeah, I was, was, I, was affected, I thought he affected goalkeeper, but VAR apparently yeah. looked at it and said it was okay. So I, I'm, I, I just stunned that that's not interfering yeah. with, with with play yeah. where yeah. he stops a goalkeeper from be, be, being in the place where he to wants play to the be. Ball. Yeah, yeah, I, I, we I did know. mention it. We mentioned yeah. it. On the I did listen. I watched the game. I listened, I listened to your commentary, yeah. and I and I know you two guys said the same thing. Yeah. The other one where I think I also thought the handball was a bit harsh. Did I, you? You know, yeah, I crikey's. It's, it's, it's right by his side. I mean, it, it was a, out a little bit, Rob. Like, mm. it I felt thought a bit Ben Davies to me last week. At oh. the it felt more like that. I mean, listen, 
Yeah, I know they're subjective. I know, yeah, I know. Yeah. But, but Mike Dean, yeah, didn't think he had a great game. But anyway, that doesn't take away from them. That's just a side note. Yeah. The 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 of course the the big story here is Man United mm. and the manager's ability to get this really really good squad of players to play like a team yeah. and to and to be strong and solid and consistent and another bad day for them today. Tell you they play yesterday. like a team, and I want to just turn the attention to Aston Villa. Yep. By the way, we must go. Yes. Dean, yeah. Smith, we're excellent. Yep. We're excellent. Yeah. Twanzebe couldn't play, so Horse came in with Mings and Konza at the back. Yeah. Matty Cash was outstanding on Brilliant. the right-hand side. Very, very good. Target mm. on the left-hand side. And they had the three midfield players of Jacob, Louise and McGinn, who after yeah. boss the midfield were better. Uh, and up front, Ollie Watkins and Danny Ings, um, who maybe didn't get goals, but continued to push and, and, and challenge United down the sides, got one-on-one, -on -one, made it difficult. Ollie Watkins looked sharp around the box. I didn't think Danny Ings had his greatest game, but you always know what you'll get in terms of effort and teamwork. And they were better set up. They were more suited to what they were going to do. And I have to say, Rob, I'm going to give my underappreciated player of the week to Douglas Louise, who I thought was the best midfield player out on show. I thought he outshone Bruno. He was better than Pogba and anything Manchester United had. Yeah. And when I look at what Manchester United miss in that controlled footballer, yeah. Douglas Louise yeah. is that He, he can control the game. He can control, control the game. He can see a pass forward. He can, can, you know, continuity where he's going to pass it from side to side. I thought he was mm. outstanding. His, his ball suit to the front players, his, his tactical understanding. Once or twice, he's clever with the possession and protects the ball and wins three kicks. Um, I thought he was really, really good. And, and you know, at a time when often we look for pace and power and size in there, there's a real technical operator who's um, mm. a really good pickup for, for Aston Villa. And I have to say, I yeah. thought Villa were good. I thought they were they were worthy of the win, Rob. In the end, yeah, it's a great shout. It's a great shout. And this is this is this is why we do this little thing every weekend, Rob, to, to mm. try and highlight players that, that fly under the radar a little yeah. bit. I haven't, you know, I haven't got the big names mm. sometimes, um, but I totally agree. I thought John McGinn as well, Rob, in that midfield. I think he's. He's having a good season. And I'm pleased for, for Dean Smith, his reaction. I mean, it's pretty special, mate, for Dean Smith yeah. to go to Old Trafford and win a game like that. I, I just felt good for him. And uh, Matty Cash, Matty Cash, at right wing back. God, I'm telling you what, Gareth, what Southgate, Gareth Southgate was at the game. You might <laughs> want to look at him. And I think yeah. Matty Cash is talking about going to play for Poland because his, his mum's Polish and he'd get Poland. Yeah. Po uh, Poland yeah, good shot. Yeah, he'd totally play. Yeah. I'm telling you what, look pretty really good. good. Me. Well done, Aston Villa. Yeah, let's move it on to probably the most entertaining game of the weekend. Six goals, three for Brentford, three for Liverpool. Just, just one of them games you 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 look back on, Rob, and smile. It it kind of was a bit end to end, a bit basketball, one where both coaches could have lots to look at and work at. But I think huge credit has to go to Brentford. I mean, down twice in the game, two one three two, come back, have a go. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, with, with names that many of our, our, our listeners and, and, and viewers may not know, you know, is certainly not regular Premier League names. But this team, Avanoff got a spirit about them. Don't off play good oh. football. Can't, you know, got mixed up. And Bomo and uh, Tony, two centre forwards who are going to give the best trouble. I mean, Virgil van Dijk had his hands full, my yeah. friend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. As, as did the Liverpool team. Yeah. I mean, it was it was fantastic. And you say in the game of the weekend, and it was the game of the weekend, Rob, mm. on the back of a, a Chelsea and City game, yeah. a North London derby. And yet what Brentford are bringing to this league in, mm. a, in a stadium, what is it again? Is it 13,000 or something? Something like a community stadium, yeah. The community, community stadium is like, yeah. it's, it's new, but it's small. Yeah. And it's just brilliant what they're doing. And and the way that Thomas Frank is, is playing, he's doing exactly what he said he was going to do. He's going to say he's going to attack for every minute that was possible. They're going to try and win every game. They went toe to toe with Liverpool, mm. and they were okay with an open game. And they give them a right, a right good game in all areas of the field, from the midfield area to the attack front two players against the, the back four. Liverpool are looking good. They're looking very, very good. Yeah. I mean, Jogo Jota again. I mean, have we seen a better header, a, a goal scoring? Sure. Header, header of a ball, such a, sm a small For guy. Somebody who's not that big, yeah. He's yeah. got brilliant timing. He, he gets good positions between centre-backs or full-back and centre-back. Um, brings another kind of dimension to Liverpool because they're yeah. not really... Goals. There weren't many headed goals, though, was there, from, no. from Liverpool in the past? No. It's all lovely football and, and shots and, and passing it into the net. 
But it just gives them that ability to sling a ball in. And whether it's Robertson and, and Trent on the on the outside or Henderson who loves that, that ball into the box. Yeah, it, it, it just brings another dimension that, that's exciting. And what was great about the game was both were sort of going at it to win it. Nobody was, was happy with the draw. Brentford, I think, was sniffing like a famous win against Liverpool. Liverpool are thinking... We've got to be Brentford. They've just been promoted, and we, you know, we want to go top of the table, which they did in the end by the odd point. But it, it was just a brilliant, a brilliant match. And little tip of the hat to, I think, as well to um, Mo Salah. I think he might have been your underappreciated player of the week a couple of weeks ago. It's yep. a great shot. Hundred goals, Rob, in 151 games for Liverpool. I mean, yeah. might Liverpool the fastest of any player yeah. in the club history. Just speaks volumes of, of what he does on a regular basis. And having got one, actually, it was a day he could have got two or even three. Yeah, we've talked a lot, Rob, about players need to be consistent consistent and stuff. I mean, how consistent is Mo Salah? It's almost every game, every game he plays, you really know what, what you're going to get. And yeah. and and that is good stuff. It's, it's, it's getting chances to score. He's not going to score every game. But, man, he's going to get a chance to score in every single game, whether he takes them or not. I mean, again, a, 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 another goal in this one. And that's pretty amazing. 100 goals in 151 while playing I mean, from a wider yeah. position. I mean, he is a special, special player. I mean, I, I read somebody on, on uh, social media saying that, is he the best player in the world right now? Mm. Probably. Possibly is. The best player in the world right now is Mo oh. Salah. Um, when you think about Messi and Ronaldo, you think about yeah. Neymar and yeah, Mbappe. I yeah. mean... Uh, um, Haaland, Erling Haaland, of course, yeah, you'd, you'd say yeah. him, but uh, mm, anyway, yeah, yeah, Lewandowski, of course, yeah. I thought it was a good, I thought it was a good shout. I thought, yeah. yeah, actually, it's a reasonable shout. Um, just, just back on Brentford, Rob, just so we, we can go back and forth on this a little yeah. bit. What, what I think, uh, seeing a, a weaker team, right, a weaker team, so called weaker team, being expansive and proactive mm. is, is. I, I love it because yeah. the general conception is the perception is that you can't do that. And I know that the Newcastle United fans, Rob, want something more progressive from Steve Bruce. Yeah. And I think when they when they see a team like Brentford and a manager as young and as as uh, progressive as Thomas Frank do this, yeah. That's that's I think that's where some of it comes from. We're not just yeah. Newcastle. I'm sure there's some other clubs. Yeah. That feel like we we want some young exciting manager to to play like that at our football club um it's just i i just you know again the little lap of honor at the end yeah. it seems a bit over the top but why not when yeah, things are going well yeah. and the support's been so amazing anyway i just i just yeah. i just wanted to get that it's point in about i mean uh, the, the point that, that, that smacked to me of brentford from the weekend was twofold really it it, it reminds me a little bit of leeds last season where do you know what? The Premier League's a better league with this team in it. And mm. it's great that they've come up with a identity, a sense of personality, and they're going to stick to it, Rob. And they're not going to bunker in like Norwich and try and hit on the counter-attack and have the odd chances and lose 1-0, 2-0, 3-0 and mm, had a go. They're going to have the ball. They're going to create chances. They're going to get beat on some days and they'll push themselves down, but they're going to beat others. And they look well capable of being mid-table and safe. And listen, we're, we're very early on and we know things can go wrong quite quickly and we can go on long mm -hmm. runs. But mm -hmm. the manager, the players, and the, the setup of this football club tells me how it's run and, and the way mm -hmm. they buy players and the profile yeah. of players who are all a bit hungry, Rob, all with a bit of something yeah. to prove. Yeah, they're onto something. That this club's going to be okay. Yeah, they're onto something. And it's not just about the attacking players and strikers that have no. been sold to other clubs that we know all about. Mm. Um, Norgard in midfield, Rob. It's not yeah. just about forwards and attacking players. They've got they've got it figured out with their recruitment. Mm. Back in the defensive unit, it's very similar. Uh, the boy from Celtics just in there. Yeah, Aya um, is in Aya there. But it, yeah. other than that, there's a lot of continuity mm. in there. And they know what they're doing. Yeah, it's a, it's a great story. Of course, long mm. way to go. We yeah. know that, but what a game. What a game of football it was. Yeah. And I th I thought it summed up with the embrace of the two managers afterwards. Mm -hmm. like, end, yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? I'm sure That's you're toe, isn't it? Yeah. frustrated you didn't get three points there. Um, but wow, what a great game of football. Mm -hmm. And again, an advert. And I, and I don't want to keep going on about it, Rob, but the Premier League. I mean, particularly this year, it's, yeah. it's a fun league with great teams at the top and great teams that maybe you expect to be around the bottom as well. So... 
totally really really enjoyed the game superb stuff last comment just to saw a note here yeah i just thought henderson you know and i, yeah. I, I know that you love 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 jordan mm. henderson i think the midfield now curtis jones scores a wonderful goal but fabinho henderson and one other isn't it, it yeah. i mean it just is yeah. it just is i mean there's a sense that maybe you could go for a bit more with tiago's and the yeah you know, and elliot yeah, comes back and stuff. But, possibly yeah, Henderson and Fabinho. It's got to be yeah, two of the three yeah, of those two. Yeah, the yeah. drive that he that he gives, mm. the cross for the goal. Yeah. Um, yeah, very, very good Henderson, I thought, as well. I think the there's game. some talk that uh, Rebecca might be doing an interview with him this week on Thursday, actually. So that'd be interesting here. Now he's signed a contract and you yeah. know, what he's looking forward to now in the next stage of his yeah. career. But yeah, it's so, so important, the captain. Uh, it's a good yep. shout just to mention him. Okay, mate, let's move on to um, the other game today, the early kickoff. Southampton nil, Wolves 1. Raul Jimenez scores for the first time in nearly a year since that horrific head injury. And maybe Southampton fans are poor. I think everybody in football was just pleased for him, for the goal, for the nature of the goal, Rob, which I thought was outstanding, was sort of Jimenez back in the day. And the celebrations with the Wolves fans and his teammates was, again, Mm. something that, you know, in this league, you're just so pleased to see. Because there must have been, at some point, a time when you know we weren't sure of whether we see Raul Jimenez mm. back on, on a pitch and certainly not scoring goals uh, yeah. for Wolves. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I mean, I, I think he said himself like how lucky he is to to be back out there. And I think you know, it was kind of time was going on, but he's got his goal. I thought Bruno Large made some ballsy calls, Rob, in terms of his lineup and, yeah, and switching no out the wide players. No Traore. Traore, yeah, to switch those. And there, there is some decent players there. Pedro Neto's to come back into this yeah. team as well. That's a player that I absolutely love to bits as well. Oh, yeah. So, you know, I think we feel with, with Bruno Large is, is Wolves. It's like, well, you know, is this going to be good or is this going to be a struggle? Yeah. Um, I think we know that Southampton are going to have a bit of a struggle up this season, potentially. Yeah. Um, big win. Big win for Wolves, the manager. Those decisions that he made, I think that sort of those sort of big cause does get the respect to the dressing room. Yeah. And but the biggest headline, the the, the one real headline is Raul Jimenez, Robin, and getting that goal and the embrace, etc., the celebrations. I mean, that's a, you know, that that was a, a very important day for for yeah. him. Yeah, yeah, it really was. Absolutely, gets his first, and don't be surprised if he goes on a run again now when no. uh, starts getting a few more. Just a quick look at a few other results. Uh, Leeds one, West Ham two. Uh, West Ham continues to go with, with, with David Moyes. Mikel Antonio yet again coming up with a win. I mean, what, what a player he's been for, for West Ham this season. Mm. Leicester 2, Burnley 2. Um, that's what Conan getting his goal. Conor getting his goal for, for Burnley. Uh, two goals from Jamie Vardy and an own goal. Uh, so, interesting day for him and, and um, Brendan Rodgers. Just not quite going as probably Brendan would have planned right now for Leicester. Yeah, it absolutely isn't. And I think of, of these games, these are the results. I think the, the narratives continue. You mm. know, West Ham United, flying. Yeah. Leeds, struggling. Yeah, a little bit. You yeah. know, Leicester and Burnley, 2-2. Two, two. Mm. Like, yeah, you know, that is, it continues the story of Leicester where something's just not quite right there yeah. at the moment. You know, whatever it is, it's, it's tough to put your finger on it. It's still a very talented squad. Everton, I, I continue to like what's happened in Everton and you know I know it's not the most glamorous right now and I know it's not you know it's some are not thrilled about Rafa Benitez I think I think he can do a really solid job yeah. there uh, the time. goals is, is an absolute same bonus, narrative what we've said yeah, yeah. He, he's doing the, and, and then mm. Newcastle again you know Watford 1-1 mm. so nothing you know those, those results pretty much uh, you we haven't learned you. we haven't learned and mm. nothing's really changed yeah. you know where where some of the bigger ones that we've been more in depth with Rob there's kind of some pretty important differences in what we've seen so uh mm. all in all though mate i know we've got one more game tomorrow on the monday um but again another fantastic entertaining premier league weekend loved it well as ever mate uh it was good to speak uh mm-hmm. i had andrews cantor last week i was wondering whether to make a transfer but i'll, I'll give you another week <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll give you one deal we'll see from there did you say another super week of premier league football Bragging rights and the points go to Arsenal as they blew Spurs away in the big North London derby. We'll be back on Wednesday, that's September the 29th, and we'll talk about the second round of the Champions League. And we'll also have a word on Brighton and Graham Potter. They beat Palace tomorrow and go top of the table in what's called the M23 derby. So we're back on those anyway. <laughs> but for now, I'm Earl. He's Musty together with the two Robbies. Thanks for watching and listening. Be safe, stay healthy. It's a good night from me. And it's good night from him.
Good night. Good night. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch highlights all season long and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend at 7 a.m. Eastern. And for even more content, head over to Peacock, where we've got live games, original series and a dedicated round-the-clock Premier League channel featuring studio shows, classic matches and much more.